Shabbat Shalom, everybody. My name is Jordan. This is Tyler. And we are bringing the Torah portion for the last day of Unleavened Bread, yep. which is this year. Uh, well, today is First Fruits, yeah. which is cool. Yeah. The day that Yeshua was resurrected. resurrected. Amen. And tomorrow, uh, or the last day of Unleavened Bread, is a Sabbath yes. and a holy assembly, a holy convocation. Holy convocation yeah. So we're just going to talk about the, the Torah portion um, for that day and, mm -hmm. and our thoughts. Yep. Deuteronomy 15, 19. 19 through 16, 17. That's right. Yeah, this Torah right. portion is basically about bringing your firstborn mm -hmm. male to Yah and and basically the three foot feast, unleavened bread, right. Pentecost, and Sukkot, and presenting yourself before Yah. That's right, all males. All the males, right. And so one thing that uh, you know, it says for all the males to go up, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, because the males, they represent that family. And when you stand before Yah, you know, you represent your family and how, how you are and how, if you're walking in righteousness or if you're walking in wickedness, it's going to affect your family. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so when you come before Yah, you know, you better, you better have your heart right. And you better have your affairs in order um, because, you know, you represent that whole entire family. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, all the males present themselves before Yah. And it's, you know, when you think about the the Hebrew word for male is zakar. And the Hebrew word for, like, being remembered or being marked is also zakar. So it's like... Hmm. And, and the Hebrew word for male, you know, it's the, it's the same word. So it's like the male is marked, you know, because it's the same word. It's a play on word, right? Hmm. And it's like they, they're marked for that house. You know, they're they're the, they carry on the name, mm -hmm. you know, of yeah. the house. That's good. Yeah. So, you know, the son, he, he continues the, the name of the father, hmm. you know, and the lineage and the, the that makes sense because you're always all about lineage and about yeah. carrying the family forward. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And you know, like when you when you look at the Hebrew word for son is Ben, <clears throat> and uh, there's so many words that that Ben is a part of. Mm -hmm. Like the the word for a pattern, it has Ben as like the the root of the word. So like the son is the pattern. You know, mm -hmm. the father, and, and it's going to be the pattern for the family. So if if the head of the house is is right and walking in truth and, and faith and Torah and righteousness, then then when he presents himself to Yah, he's going to be blessed and his family is going to be blessed. Mm -hmm. You know, because if the leadership is wrong, the rest of the family is going to be wrong too. And that goes yeah. for a household, uh, a community. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everything, because Yah looks at leadership as like, you are representing the people. And if you're... There's a different if, level of responsibility yeah, there. Yeah, most definitely. And if you are, you know, not acting in faith and walking in, in wickedness, then you're going to bring suffering upon your community as the leader or mm -hmm. your family as the leader. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just that's just how Yah works. Whatever the leader, whatever the king, the leader, mm -hmm. or the head of the house does, it's it's imputed to the family. It's kind of like yeah. Adam. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And yeah. Yeshua. Yeshua is the second Adam. Well, what was the, there's there a proverb about that, how the kingdom is blessed when the king is righteous? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm trying to think of that. I can't think of what I'm talking yeah. about. It. Yeah. And also when he, when the king listens to lies, all his mm. servants are wicked too. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Let us pray by bribes. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It corrupts the entire system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, what I, the cool things that jumped out to me was the end of the chapter of the reading. It's, uh, chapter 16, verse 17. It said, every man shall give as he is able according to the blessing yeah. of the Lord, your God. And mm -hmm. I think the, uh, the living version is a little bit 
it, it's, it, it means the same thing. It reads a little different. This is the New King James. But I thought that was interesting mm -hmm. because that implies that blessing comes from Yahweh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that so we don't have to strive for it. Right. And we don't, like it's not up to us. You're not going to miss out right. on it. Like right, it right. takes a lot of fear. I feel like that yeah. leads to a more yeah. healthy <clears throat> thought life. Yeah. It's sure. not up to you. It's like from right, blessings right. from Yahweh. It makes me think of that verse that uh, a, a good wife is better than an inheritance from your father. Yeah. And who does that come from? It comes from yeah. Yahweh. Mm -hmm, and sure. Yahweh is our salvation, mm -hmm. uh, which is what we believe. Right. Yeshua is God and he is our salvation. Yeah. That's what his name, sure. name means. Yeah. Which, which makes me think about the... One of the things that really hung, stuck out to me initially was that Day of Atonement is not one of the foot pieces. Mm. So if you read Leviticus 16, which is all about the Day of Atonement, yeah. it says in, I think, 16, 17, that no one can be in there but the high priest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, until he completes atoning for himself, his family, Damn and man. the nation, yeah. everyone right. has to stay out of there. Mm -hmm. And it's a, um, I think Leviticus 16 at 17 is actually the verse about afflicting your, no, no, that's, there should be no man in the tabernacle meeting mm -hmm. when he goes in to make atonement in the holy place until he comes out, that he mm -hmm. may make atonement for himself, for his household, yeah. for all the assembly of Israel. See how it starts with himself? And then his house, mm. and then the entire community. Right. You know. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's kind of like the the. This doesn't fit perfectly, but the the analogy of a, a fruit, the seeds in the center. Exactly. Yeah. And then the fruit is, right. is all a product of the yeah, seed. So yeah, it all like branches out. Like, exactly. You know. Kind of like what you were talking yeah. about earlier with the fathers, mm. the men, mm -hmm. like right. their family's blessed if right. they're walking walking yeah. with the obedience. And then like the, uh, Deuteronomy or Exodus twenty, the Ten Commandments, like they're. The generations are blessed because you are, you know, you're loving Yah and keeping his commandments. So he says, like, you know, his mercy is to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. So it starts with you. Yeah. And it goes to your family and then it goes to the next generation and the next. Mm, that's know? beautiful. You know? That's good. Dude, it's like a, it's like throwing a, a rock into water. Just the ripples just. It starts in that one spot and then it just goes out. You know? That's beautiful. That's so good. And I, that's the thing about atonement. What does that sound like? That you only one man can atone for him for himself and for the nation, mm -hmm. and then no one else can be there. Mm -hmm. That sounds like Yeshua to me. Yeah, Yeshua and, and Hebrews talks about as much. Mm -hmm. He he made atonement for us for once and for all. Yeah. So we it was never intended right. that we were going to be our own salvation. It was never intended. It was yeah. always Yahweh. Right. Yahweh was always our salvation. Yeah. I mean, you can't redeem yourself. Right. You know? Exactly. Right. And one thing to kind of go back a little bit, when you mentioned um, you're to present yourselves to Yah and, and as Yah has blessed you, and mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you you just kind of rest and not really strive and Yah will bless you in faith, you know? Right. And uh, man, that, that verse jumped out in Deuteronomy 11 where he's saying like remember like you know when you were in egypt you you had to water the garden by foot mm. like you had to put all this work in to produce mm. but the land you're going into is a land that receives rain from the from heaven mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and then he his eyes are on the land from, from that's right the yeah. end of the year to the beginning of the year and he pours out his blessing on it so it's like you know when you think spiritually like when you come out of Egypt, when we were in Egypt in bondage in our sin, and we were striving, we were like uh, just grinding at the wheel. Slaves. You know, we were slaves. Hello, we're in Passover and bread, right? Right. We had taskmasters, which were anger, fear, greed, mm -hmm. you know, putting us to work. <laughs> mm -hmm. But now that we've been brought out and redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, the, the land or the kingdom, you know, that we're going to and which – We've received in part some, right? Mm -hmm. It's like we rest in the finished work of Yeshua, and He He rains on us His blessing, and He He causes us to produce fruit, where you know you're not striving to, you just receive the rain that comes from heaven, mm -hmm. and you produce the fruit of the Spirit. That's mm -hmm. good. That's really good, man. Well, I hope that the this 
encourages you guys. And uh, Tyler, thanks for joining yeah, me and doing this with me. Uh, I hope you guys have a great last day of Unleavened Bread. Yes.